One local mother is on a mission to spread kindness and keep the ball rolling in honor of her late son. Brooke DeBarros lost her son, Chase Soares, in 2020. The 23-year-old basketball all-star was known to family and friends for his generosity and humble heart. So it is only fitting that his mother, Brooke, started the Team Chase Foundation to help inspire people to spread random acts of kindness. In this interview, we'll learn more about the Team Chase Foundation and the many ways how you can participate in spreading kindness. For those who do not know you, I would like to uh, have them get to know you. So let's start with your son, which is the reason to why you are traveling across the country. You have changed your career and uh, you have become uh, uh, a household name <sighs> to many people in your community. So tell us about your son. Um, my son was um, Chase Ors. Um, he was my firstborn, the love of my life. And um, he was 23 and he was a Falmouth High School graduate. And um, he went on to go to um, SMCC in Portland, Maine. Um, and then he transferred over to uh, Plymouth State in New Hampshire. Um, his passion was basketball. So, um, mama never missed a game. <laughs> um, Where did he get his passion from? Who played basketball in your family? Just Chase. Just since, Chase. since he was two, um, he always had a basketball in his hand um, since like this. Mm -hmm. And boy, did he have that basketball at all times. He went everywhere with a basketball. Um, every night after elementary school, he would do nothing but shoot baskets. Um, he used to go to the YMCA, he used to go, you know, to the Morse Pond School and Lawrence School and high school and just always had a basketball. And when he got older, he always had a basketball in the car wherever he went. Um, so he practiced for hours and hours on end. Um, what were his dreams um, with the basketball? Oh, he wanted to. He wanted to go to the NBA. He wanted to play. Um, you know, he his his ins inspiration for basketball was Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. um, he had um, Kobe Bryant inspired him. Um, my son's number was twenty four, um, and because that's Kobe Bryant's number. So in college, he couldn't get 24 one year, so he was 23. Um, but the 24 he loved because of Kobe Bryant. Um, so like in his bedroom, growing up in elementary, he had, you know, the, the poster that goes from um, the floor all the way to the ceiling was Kobe Bryant in his bedroom. Um, and then still at 23, when he passed away over his bed, he still had Kobe Bryant poster over his bed. Um, and the last real conversation I kind of had, um, I was a helicopter mom and um, I talked to my son every single day, whether it be through text or phone calls. Um, his Nana Pauline was passing away and we went um, to go say goodbye to her. And in that moment, we left, we left the hospital and I knew something was bothering him. And um, you know, I said, what's wrong? He said, I'm really devastated, mom. He said, Kobe, um, Bryant passed away today and I'm really devastated and um, you know we talked about it and and then um, that was like the real last long conversation that I had with my son because 10 days later my son passed away. Um, he died from a tragic yeah. sudden in a car accident, accident. Mm -hmm. and um, and then he was buried on the same day that Kobe Bryant was buried. Um, so one day I hope to meet Vanessa Bryant and tell her my story and tell her about my son. Um, now, apart from his passion, his love for the game, it was your son's character that it has opened so many doors and has allowed people, or has made it so easy for people to launch on to what you are trying to do nowadays to keep his memory alive. Could you talk about his character? My son was so kind, so humble. Um, he was just very, very, he would do anything for you. Um, I've heard so many, so many stories and I've witnessed so many things. Um, but he, he was very, very good at basketball, but he, he never, 
never acted like he was the best or anything. He was just very humble about it. Um, you know, he set records and he still holds a record in college. Um, but just the kindest. I had seen him, you know, work and cash his own paycheck and go buy f a groceries for a friend that didn't have groceries and, and drop them off. Um, one of his friends at college, they weren't even like really, really um, close, um, but um, his friend lost um, his parent in a car accident. And um, he told me that Chase was the first one that reached out to him and said, listen, if you need to ever talk, or if you, you need me for anything, or if you want to talk about it, I'm here to listen and I'm here for you. Um, so my son was very kind. If, if you ever needed anything, if you needed a sweatshirt or some sneakers or even an Xbox, if, if whatever he had, if you needed it, it was yours. So he was, he was very, very kind. <clears throat> you told me my first conversation with you over the phone when I was trying to book you for this interview. You shared something very deep and, and, and personal. The days following your son's passing, where you were mentally, emotionally, and you said you decided to hold on and you talked about that reason. Could you share with us why you're here today, fighting this fight, spreading this message, instead of your other initial thoughts? Um, I was in a really deep hole, dark, deep hole. Um, didn't want to be here anymore. Um, it was COVID two weeks after Chase passed away. Um, so nobody could come over. I couldn't see my mom, my dad, um, my friends. Um, it was, um, it was an unimaginable pain that you only know if you lost a child. And, um, and I don't wish it on anybody because it's the worst, worst feeling in the, in the world, losing, losing a child. Um, and I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and cried and I still cry and you know people see me now and you know they see a smile on my face and they think that Brooke is okay and Brooke is 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 moving and I'm and I'm functioning and I'm you know living for Chase and to keep my son's memory alive um, but I still cry a lot um, I miss my son um, I laid in bed for over a year I, I didn't want to I didn't want to I didn't want to do anything. I, I, I wanted my son back. I missed him very much. Um, and then I decided that um, I had read something that Vanessa had posted on social media and she had said that, you know, you can lay in bed and your outcome of your situation isn't going to change. You know, nothing's going to change. Um, and you laying in bed isn't going to change anything. Um, and she said she gets up and puts one foot in front of the other for her kids. Um, and so I, I, I said, you know what, I have to get up and I have to put one foot in front of the other and I have to live for my, for my Raiden, my son, and for my husband and I have to get up and I didn't want anybody to forget about my son and I didn't know how to keep his memory alive but I know that I was on a mission to talk about my son and to never let anybody forget about him. The Chase Foundation, it's about spreading random acts of kindness, celebrating each other, the humanity mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. us. And you're doing all of this, as you just shared, where you are, you said to us, you said to us that you are functioning. Mm -hmm. We see a smile and we may equate that as everything now is all right, mm -hmm. but you're saying to us you're functioning. And mm -hmm. I am curious about how you can master the strength to look and search for the beauty in this life while you are hurting. You know what keeps me going? Number one, I ask Chase to send me strength every single day. I talk to my son and I tell him to give me strength and I pray every day for him to, to keep me. Every day I tell him, give me strength to get through this day because I live now day by day, sometimes minute by minute day by day um, but this foundation 
is what's keeping me alive and living and, and, and fueling me and keeping me going by seeing the people that I can help and the reaction and making them happy um, and doing kind things. It, this is what's keeping me going. Um, it, it, it warms my heart um, when, when people do acts of kindness for each other, but even more when I'm able to, to do something kind for somebody um, and I can just see their face light up and like, wow, you're doing that? Or wow, like, um, it's just a feeling that you get that nothing else has been able to help me deal with the passing of my son. So tell us about the foundation. How does it work? And you have brought us a little ball here. Yeah, um, the foundation, I, I wanted it. Um, I thought long and hard. It took me for about, it took about over, an, over a year to come up with an idea about my foundation because it it's not a regular foundation that's just one passion and, and that's it. Um, so I wanted it to be kind of like surrounded like a, a team, like a basketball, like as if Chase was still here on a team and, and with a basketball. Um, and I came up with Team Chase Foundation. Um, so the team um, stands for Together Everyone Achieves More and then Chase stands for Care, Help and Share Every Day. Um, and then so my foundation was set up like... You did that. You turned his name into an acronym, right? I yes. Just, <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, so everything um, that I do, um, it, it's care, help, and share every day. That, that is Chase. So that's what, what we need to do. Everybody needs to care, help, and share every day. Um, but the first concept I came up with um, was, it's called the Chase Challenge Kindness Ball. And... Um, what it is, is um, it's to do an act of kindness um, for somebody and pass it on. It's, it's, it's a basketball, and so I wanted to actually like bounce it forward, like pay it forward, pass it on, keep it rolling. So the point is to do an act of kindness and you pass the ball so it, it will just keep on going and going and going. Um, so what I came up with was, um, at first I, I was thinking, you know, how do I get these in all the different states? I want them in all the different states. And of course, at first, I said the first thing I would do is start with friends and family. Um, but on the back of them, it's, it says, um, enjoy this random act of kindness. It's your turn to pay it forward. Pass the kindness ball on, on with your random act of kindness and keep the ball rolling. So you could follow your ball on our interactive map to see how far your kindness travels. So what you do is you scan the QR code and it will take you to the map on the world map on the website. So you would put your name, you would put queen and you would put, it, register, it registers where the ball is. So you would put, um, I bought someone a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. And then you can see all the acts of kindness that are being done all over the world. And it's just starting to happen because I get a notification. So right now, every day, more than one ball is being uploaded every single day. So what happens is it, it registers the ball and it automatically uploads on Team Chase um, Foundation on, on the Facebook page. And so, of course, I, I read every single one. But what's happening now is because every ball has a number. And so you can actually, so if it, if it starts with me and I, I got something, uh, if I did an act of kindness and then it went to Queen and then it went to, um, you know, you did something in, in Florida for somebody and then Florida did some, you know, for the next person, you could actually, when you register this ball and, and you can follow it. So if you go to the end, it will say that this ball went from Brooke in Falmouth, Mass to Queen in Falmouth, Mass, and then it went to John. So this one ball, you can track many different times and see exactly where this one ball goes. So I've noticed now over the last couple of weeks that the ball is actually bouncing. It, I call it bouncing, but it's people are doing acts of kindness and, and this ball keeps on going. Um, so the ball is, um, it ended up in Singapore um, it ended up in South Korea and all over the United States. Um, so it, again, my son's memory is, is alive and it just warms my heart every time that I see an act of kindness. So the ball keeps on rolling. Mm -hmm. May we talk about the next big act of kindness events that you, um, you're working on? 
Well, with Team Chase Foundation, so this is only one thing of Team mm -hmm. Chase Chase Foundation. So um, basically, there's um, what we're doing is we support youth athletics, um, and we also um, we support kids who want to go to camp um, like that sporting camps um, that um, you know that have a difficult time paying or whatever. That's where Team Chase will come in to help because we want you know all kids to be involved in sports and not worry about having to pay you know to to be in athletics um, and we have um, it's called the um, chase challenge um, and we're going to start that and we're going to do that like a different every month we're going to have a different chase challenge um, and next year um, we're going to do the chase challenge kindness ball tour again and it's from Massachusetts to California and the reason behind that is because chase was going to be moving to California and never got a chance um, to move to California. So that's for the summer of 2023 coming up. Um, and we have um, here in Falmouth, we give away um, scholarships to um, seniors at Falmouth High School. Uh, I was very, very pleased and happy that I was able to give four scholarships out this, this year. And um, Chase's last name was Soars. So the scholarship is um, Chase Your Dreams and Soar High in Memory of Chase Soars. So that's um, one scholarship. And the scholarship that we added this year was called the Be Kind Scholarship. Um, and those, scholar, um, those scholarships do not have, um, you don't have to be a straight A student or a certain GPA. Um, you just write um, a small thing of, of why you're, you know, who you were kind to, what did you do in your community or, to help somebody and be kind, it's it's open to everyone. But now, how can people be part of this movement? What are you looking for? How can the community rally with you? Well, these balls right here, we have, um, it's gonna be called Kindness Night. Um, it's the first one, um, it's booked for January 20th at Falmouth High School uh, basketball game. So it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of a lot of surprises. I'm not going to tell you everything. It's going to be kindness night on January 20th, and Team Chase is going to be at the high school that night. Um, so everybody will be getting balls, and there'll be a lot of giveaways and surprises that night during halftime. Um, it's going to be halftime's pretty short, pretty fast, but it, that's going to be a lot of a lot of different prizes and stuff that night. Um, and my, so my, my hope and my goal is to get as many basketballs out and get them all over the world. And it's actually happening right now. My dream is actually coming true, keeping my son's name alive and memory alive, his legacy alive, because um, being in People Magazine, um, our family was the kindest family in America. And I have people from all over um, requesting these balls that I had to order new ones today because I've had people request these for stocking stuffers. I've had teachers request these for their classrooms. How has the past almost three years ago, two and a half years ago, what has happened with your son, losing your son? What has been happening, the success of the foundation? How has that changed your life, but mostly I'm curious about what have you learned about yourself from the events that have transpired? Well, I know that I'm a strong individual. Um, I'm a strong woman and um, I try to keep it together most of the time. Um, I have many, many days that I can't keep it together that people don't see. They, they see, you know, that you know, they think that Brooke is all better. They say all better. Um, but if, um, you know, people could actually have like a x-ray machine just to, to see the inside of me, I am, I am shattered and broken. Um, and I, like I said, I try to put one foot in front of the other um, to keep my, my son's memory alive. And um, I'll never stop talking about my son and, and doing acts of kindness. And I just know that everybody is helping me that I help it, it, anybody that I do something kind for it it helps me thank you so much so. for sharing thank you for being here yeah. in our studios thank you very much for having me thank you and make my guest was Brooke DeBarros talking about the Chase Foundation and her mission to spread random acts of kindness 
For more information, you can find that on our website or you can visit their website as well, Team Chase Foundation Online. In FCTV studio, I am Queen Banda. Have a wonderful day.